This is ADT 1160U, Digital Communication Technologies. The title for this particular video clip is Problem-Based Learning Scenarios. In this video clip, we will present the three problem-based learning scenarios for this course. Listen attentively to the scenarios and let yourself be guided by the analysis questions that follow each scenario. First scenario, Professions in Professional Practice. Ricardo immigrated to Canada in 2008. He was born in Bolivia and lived in Venezuela for most of his life and ran the family business, a plumbing shop. When his parents passed away, he came to Canada to ensure that his children would get a chance at getting a good education and a better life than what he had. He sold his business and brought all of his belongings in a container so that he could start a new life here. When he arrived, he was sent to immigration employment centers. They asked him dozens of questions and helped him create a CV the Canadian way. The professional who helped him at the employment center explained that the Canadian government offers to reimburse 50% of the salary for a period of six months to employers who hire new immigrants. Ricardo was confident that he would get a job because he worked all of his life as a plumber and he knew how to manage a business with all the logistics it involved. The first time he applied for a plumbing job, Ricardo realized he needed a specific license to be a plumber in Canada. Some jobs did hire apprentices that were coming out of college, but they had to be recent graduates or currently enrolled in college. With all his family responsibilities, Ricardo didn't want to go back to college. He then tried to get a job in the retail industry related to plumbing. He sent his CV and a cover letter to all the businesses in the Grand Toronto area that he could find in the phone book. After sending out over a thousand CVs and spending more than a thousand dollars in paper, envelopes and stamps, Ricardo didn't receive one single phone call. Every morning, after he sent the kids to school, Ricardo took the habit to go to the coffee shop next to his house where he read several papers that were available for free. He wanted to become informed of politics and to consult the job section. He noticed that he was not the only one to have this habit. Most of the regulars, however, did not spend much time reading the paper. They all had laptops or tablets or smartphones, which Ricardo didn't know how to use, given he had limited contacts with digital technologies in his life. One woman, who often seemed quite busy, often spoke Spanish on the phone. She came in every morning, ordered a tea, opened her laptop and did all sorts of activities while she spoke with her clients. Ricardo, who had become a familiar face, took the opportunity to exchange a few words in Spanish with her. After several months of joking and talking about the weather, she asked him what he did for a living. He explained the situation. She immediately opened the web page and showed him a posting for a job as a technical trainer for a bathtub company. The requirements were that the person had experience in plumbing and in training employees. She said her name was Vicky B asked him to connect with her on LinkedIn and said that she would link him to the people who hired that she knew well. She gave him a business card. She said she was waiting for him to connect with her and left for her workday. Ricardo went back to the Immigrant Employment Center and asked for help, but nobody was knowledgeable enough to help him out. What can you do to save Ricardo? Second scenario, Commerce. Vicky is a successful instructional designer who worked for one year as an educational software designer and then started her PhD full-time. During her PhD studies, she decided to start her own business and took contracts with various companies. She no longer had enough time to create all the training material, so she outsourced the graphic design elements to a graphic designer named Jen. She had connected with Jen through friends on Facebook. She had seen Jen's design because friends were commenting on them. When she friended Jen, she discovered her portfolio through her photo albums. She really liked her style and wanted similar visuals in her e-learning courses, so she started giving a contract for a few illustrations. This first contract led to a second one and to a partnership between the two girls, despite the fact they had never met. Jen lived with her boyfriend, Jack, in British Columbia. Jack had an online electronics distribution business. 
He took advantage of the business with China to buy large amount of electronics and resold these in smaller amounts in Canada. He ran his business from his home and filled up his garage with the electronic goods. All of his business was done online and he recruited many clients from creating links in social networks. Jen's father, Harry, had a business in the GTA called Bat Depot. He sold bathroom accessories and offered bathtub refinishing services. He always made a good living out of his business, but with the competition from big companies and the access to bathtubs made in China that were much cheaper, Bat Depot was suffering. Harry was beginning to wonder if he could go on with 10% of the business he used to have. Jen initiated him to social media and asked Jack to help her father do better online advertisements for his business. What do you think Jack and Jen can do to save Harry's business? Third scenario, education. Harry's wife, Mary, has been the director of a language school for the past 20 years. Traditionally, language courses were offered face-to-face, -face, but in the past few years, there has been a growing demand to expand the service offering online to both reach new customers, but also to exploit the potential of synchronous and asynchronous technologies. While Mary is very open to these new ideas and she is able to use email, prepare spreadsheets and install educational software on her computers, she doesn't feel very confident to use technologies to teach. She feels even less comfortable to take institutional decisions to implement a wide-scale change. She decides to approach two young employees who have been performing well as language instructors to try a pilot project. On one hand, Pierre, who is a French and German instructor, was born in France of a French mother and a German father. Mary notices that during his lunch hour, Pierre often puts his headphones and has a conversation over Skype with his relatives in Europe. He appears to do this rather naturally. Joe, on the other hand, is an English and Spanish instructor, also did some work as a web and server administrator for the language school. He knows his technologies very well because his background was in computer engineering. He has a small consulting business aside from the work he does at the language school. Mary heard that he designed MOOCs for higher education institutions, but she doesn't know what it means. Pierre and Joe both agreed to take part of the project, as they are enthusiastic to teach online. Mary gives them carte blanche to try two short introduction courses and a small budget of $2,500 to find online solutions for the language school. What do you think Pierre and Joe should do? How should they spend this budget?